Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Merry Christmas. Hey, let's sing a song together. Here we go. This, this afternoon. I have to really force myself not to say good morning and morning and evening and all those. It's afternoon, right? Hey, we get to do this. Isn't this a privilege? Such a great time to gather as family to celebrate the arrival of Jesus, the Messiah. And what I really marvel at is looking back at the prophets who foretold of his birth. And um, you already see that in Isaiah, uh, just hundreds of years before this birth ever came to be. And then we recount every, every Christmas this wonderful, wonderful story of Jesus' birth and the proclamation, the angels, right? You guys want to hear that again? <laughs> Go ahead and have a seat, if you would, for a few moments. I asked my daughter, Alyssa, if she would read this from Luke chapter 2. Take a listen. And all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each of his own town, Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. 
and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring good news for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior who is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly there was with the angel of multitude a heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those who with he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. When they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as had been told to them. That's what it's all about. Jesus is the reason for the season indeed. Let's sing another song together. Hark, listen up. In other words, the angels sang.
Let your glory reign, shining like the day, King of heaven come. Amen. Peace. We long for peace. In our homes, in our world, in our hearts. This time of year, we anticipate peace. In our busyness, we search for calm. In our weariness, we yearn for the rest it brings. Rest from the weight of life. Rest for the weary soul. But there is good news. This peace, this rest, it came. It came as a baby. Humbly wrapped in humanity, brilliantly cloaked in heavenly glory. This baby, fully God and fully man, came to bring us peace. Invite him into the chaos of your soul, into the stillness of your heart. There is only one name that can calm the storm, only one name that can make the enemy flee. Only one name that is above every name. The King of Glory, the Prince of Heaven, Jesus, the hope of the world.
Well, good afternoon. On behalf of Grace Community Church, uh, I want to wish each and every one of you a very Merry Christmas. Uh, my name is Brian Myers. I'm the senior pastor here at Grace. And I cannot tell you how good it is uh, to be here with you and to see all of you. Are you guys having a good day? Amen. In Jesus, it, it's a good day every day. Whether you're here in this room uh, or maybe you're joining us online, we really want to welcome you and really we're a part of this celebration together and we celebrate the goodness and the glory of Jesus Christ. So I consider 2020, um, I thought it was going to be a year of vision, a year that honestly for decades that pastors have been waiting for the year 2020 because we could finally have that series 2020 vision, all right? And then COVID-19 totally torpedoed that one in all reality. I think this year went from being a year of vision uh, to really one of reflection, to really thinking about what matters most in life. And as we all tossed out our calendars filled with failed plans, I mean, how many of you guys ditched your calendar for the year? I did. It was on my wall at the office. It was taunting me. Every single day, I'd see that calendar, and it was reminding me of all the things I had planned that weren't going to happen. I literally, I think in May, I, I took it off the wall, and I said, forget it. I, I, I don't know what ne next month handles. I barely know what next week has. I'm just going to focus on this day in front of us. And so as we realized that things weren't going to go as we planned, we thought about all the things that we were going to do in 2020. I think we realized this year it's everything that 2020 was go going to do in us, the work that God was going to do in our hearts and through our lives. And I think we finally came to realize that the church gathering is very essential, that this is what we've been called to as the church, is to gather, to encourage each other, and to remind ourselves of the goodness and the glory of Jesus Christ, and so that's why we gather today. For many, 2020 was a redefining year. Uh, it was, for many, a, a, a reset of new beginnings. Uh, for us, we moved into our new home. Literally, when the shelter-in-place order went in force in March, that was our moving weekend. Needless to say, we didn't have a lot of help. Uh, we had this moving crew of three people. We were paranoid, freaking out, thinking about all the houses they had been in, and now they're moving us. And so we're like, all right, we're going to move forward in faith. We had some weddings that happened over COVID. I can't tell you this. The best weddings I've had as a pastor have been COVID weddings. Why? Because all of the, all of the bells and the whistles that everyone worries about for the wedding, that all the things that don't matter, couldn't happen this year. It was a husband and a wife committing their love to each other before God. Is that not a beautiful thing? Who cares what we're serving for dinner? We're celebrating the love that we have for each other. Some people had their, their kids this season during 2020, and they celebrated birth. And for some, we celebrated being born again in Jesus Christ. Two weeks ago, we baptized 17 people here at Grace. That is such good news. And so all this stuff, I'm just reminded that, you know, in light of us thinking we have control, we have no control. And so God is sovereign over that. And I'm like, man, God is on the move. God is working. And so 2020 was this reminder of God's goodness and his faithfulness to us, that God's promises are still there for his people. And so that's why we gather today to celebrate as the church. On this day, we celebrate that Christ, in Christ, that our best days are always ahead of us. That, that there always is a better day ahead. And so we celebrate and we look forward to that future with great anticipation. As a pastor, I'm confident in God's perfect timing. For whatever reason, all of us have been placed in this time and space to be in the year 2020 for such a time as this. You today are here, whether in this space or at home or maybe watching online. We're here together and God has divine purposes in why we're here and we're here to celebrate. Maybe you came here looking for that Christmas pick-me-up. Maybe for that service and the songs that are going to get you prepared to celebrate Christmas. Or maybe some of you were just lovingly encouraged by your spouse or loved one to be here. You know, they registered you in advance. They tricked you into the car and they drove you here. You didn't even know you were going to be here until you showed up. Welcome. You thought you guys were having lunch. No, you're having service. All right? Whatever reason you're here, know that God has greater plans, that God uses natural plans, ordinary people, to do his sap, supernatural, extraordinary work in and through your life, that today could be that day that literally transforms your life, not just for today, but for eternity. Today, I'm confident God wants you to believe 
in your head and who he is, but also receive him in your heart, that Jesus Christ would be your Lord and your Savior, and that you might collectively with everyone else receive these Christmas promises. As we reflect upon Christmas and celebrate Jesus, we are reminded of some simple truths. And the first thing is this, that God loves you. If you don't pick up on anything today, please remember this one thing. God loves you passionately. Christmas is this, is this major event and celebration in our year to remind us of where God entered the world. In, in this moment, and in, in just embrace this, that God cannot love you any more or any less than he does right now, that God's love for you is complete and unwavering. He's not fickle. He's not seeing how you behave tomorrow to see if you get coal. He's not doing that, that he's constant and faithful. And maybe this Christmas, you may be grieving relationships, maybe one you lost. Maybe you lost a loved one. Maybe Christmas is, is hard for you, and you're really embracing this idea that, man, is God really loving me? Man, John 3, 16 and 17 is uber clear on this. It's on the screen, and on the screen there at home. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. That that was God's mission for this world. The reason you can't lose Jesus is because you are God's cherished possession. He loves you. He values you. You didn't find Jesus. Jesus found you. Before you were born, the Father gave his Son as a gift, and the only thing you must do is to respond to that gift by believing in Jesus and receiving him into your life as your Lord and your Savior. As a follower of Jesus, I'm convinced that God sent his perfect Son into an imperfect world to seek and to save that which is lost. Jesus was on mission to save broken, jacked up people like me, like me. Jesus saved an imperfect man so I could be an imperfect pastor of an imperfect church who experiences the perfect love of Jesus. So if you were looking for the perfect church or the perfect pastor, you were at the wrong Christmas Eve service. You should like leave like right now, seriously. Man, the, the beauty of the gospel is that God redeems things and he shows us that how he makes all things right. The gospel of God's grace is the Father did not send his, world, uh, his son into the world to rub the world's nose in their sin. No, he sent his son in the world to show him everything that is right in Jesus Christ. In other words, the father didn't send his son into the world to condemn it, but to save it. And the truth of Christmas, and, and this is just the raw truth, God sent his son into the world for one purpose, to die, to give his life as a ransom for you. So if there's any question at at how much God loves you, all you need to look at is his son who gave his life for you. So what does this say about God? God is for you. He's for you. He not only tolerates you, he's for you. For some of you in this room, you're struggling this season. For you, 2020 was a hot mess of broken relationships, failing finances, or poor health. For some of you, a combination of all three. Maybe you are at home right now because you couldn't come here today, and so all you could do is watch this service online. Can I let you know that God is for you? That God is, 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 is with you in this very moment? In seasons like this, it's hard to believe at times that God is for us. Maybe we're thinking like, yeah, God is for them, but he's not for me. And, and I'm just not feeling it right now. If I could impart some words to you today, it would be this, that God cares about you. He not only cares about the big things in life, i.e. like your salvation, God cares also about the small things, the details. Have you heard the expression, the devil's in the details? It's a lie. Jesus is in the details. Jesus cares about the small things in life, the things in the day-to-day, -day, the everyday. Jesus is trying, and he's passionate for you, that he's working together, all things together for your good and his glory, and he wants that for you this season. And if you have any trouble embracing this, Paul is clear in Romans 8, great chapter in the Bible. If you want to like read a chapter, I encourage you, read Romans 8. But here's verses 31 and 32. 
What then shall we say of these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all, how will he also not with him graciously give us all things? Right now, you may feel like you're carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders. You may be exhausted. You may be like just ready to say, man, let's just call this year over today and just flip the calendar and say good riddance. But the gospel truth is that in this moment, God is inviting you to cast all of your anxieties, all of that stuff that you came into the service today thinking like, man, I wish I didn't have to worry about that. That God wants to take all those anxieties, all their stresses, take that from your shoulders and cast it on him because he cares for you. He wants you to be free. That's sometimes hard to embrace. As a husband, as a parent, and as a pastor, I understand stress. At times, in a house of six girls, ranging from five to 40-something, I can't say my wife's age because I want to sleep in my bed tonight, the struggle is real. To put this in perspective, if you need some free internet, you can come on my street, you can bum my internet. My, my Wi-Fi signal, it's, its password is this, drowning in estrogen. I'm not joking, that's it. That, that, that's my password for my internet. It's just like I'm outnumbered. But while I joke about you know, sometimes family and kids being the source of stress. To be honest, my, my girls have also been a source of great joy and great peace in my life. Especially when they were young, when they were little. Man, I love coming home after a long day of work, feeling like I got the weight of the world on my shoulders, and then I just hold my infant daughter and, and, and look into her eyes, and, and, and I realize that in this moment, man, I'm just living in her, her world, and she has no worries because she knows her dad loves her she knows her mom loves her that we will meet her every need that we will a hundred percent be there for her man and in that moment i'm reminded that man this is the same love that god has for us why can we not just rest and not have anxiety like a child and that's why god's word is clear that we need to have that faith of a child so if you have anxiety or if you have stress right now can you just look at the baby jesus and just cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. He carried the yoke for you so you wouldn't have to carry it yourself. If there's any questions surrounding this, we have to embrace this next principle, that God is also with you. God is with you. He loves you. He's for you. He's with you. Matthew one twenty three tells us about the prophecy and what we find in Jesus Christ. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. The very name Emmanuel means God with us. Through Jesus Christ, God came near us to literally take on flesh to experience the power and the presence of Christ. If there's any question surrounding the, the commitment that God has to us, it's the idea that God would take on flesh, the incarnation of Jesus. While this world is hungry and searching, trying to find happiness and joy. Know that Jesus already gave you this life to fill that God-shaped hole in you that only God can satisfy. And you will not find it under a Christmas tree. It's only found in the tree of the cross. This Christmas, God is asking you a very simple question, one we all must answer, including myself. Is God enough? Am I enough for you? Is the power and the presence of Jesus in your life enough to carry you through this Christmas season? The writer of Hebrews brings us back to reality. He shares this in Hebrews 13. Keep your life free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what can man do to me. And I've really had to come to grips with that. What can man do to me? Why do I let anyone have so much influence in my life other than God alone? And so as we wrap up one of the most divisive political seasons of our lifetime, I think it's important that we remind ourselves of these words, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Your help is not in a politician your help is not in a president. Your help is not in a stimulus check, whatever amount that will be. Your help is not in a vaccine. Your help and your hope is in Jesus Christ alone. Only Jesus saves. The world needs to know about that hope. 
And so as we look at Jesus, we see that he will never leave us. He will never forsake us. He's constant. So what does 2021 have to hold for us? Probably something better. I don't know. All I know is Jesus is there. And so my future is bright in Jesus Christ each year and every year. Now that we know that God loves you, he's for you, he's with you, we now can embrace this final concept as we will close here today, that God shines through you. He shines through you. Man, when I look out at your faces, man, I see the light of Christ shining back. I love it. As we close here, I want to share with you a story that I've shared before. It's about the Church of the Lanterns. It's a church made in Switzerland a long time ago. They tried to make a church that was reflective of the beauty of the landscape, architecturally, just the majesty of what was Switzerland. They wanted to show it through this church building. But what was unique about this church building is that there was no electricity, there's no power. You can go flip a switch on and it lights up, all right? They didn't have all the lights we have. It was a church building that was there to house people, and people would bring in the light themselves. And so the church bell would ring, and people from all over the community and all over the hillside would come in, and they would grab their lanterns, and they would bring them into the church. And in the church, they would hang their lanterns on the wall. And so as more people congregated there in the church, the church lit up. It was the brightest monument that there was in all the area, literally shining light through all of the community. And so the beautiful thing was that as everyone were were gathering and the light was shining and and the voices were singing, it was a reminder to everyone the power and the goodness of God. But then the beautiful thing was this, is that after the worship service, they wouldn't blow out their candles or their lanterns. They would go. And so people would watch this magical thing happen where all the light was now streaming out of the church building into the community, and it brought comfort and peace. And the reason is this. The church is not a building. The church is a people. And so we come together to celebrate the goodness and the light of Jesus Christ, and as we go out into the world, the world is comforted because God is for us, that God is with us, and that God shines through us. And so today, as we close here today, I want us to reflect upon the words of Jesus. He says, you are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house and family. That's why we gather as the church. That's why we're doing services today like four times. I mean, I'll I'll run myself ragged to share the light of Jesus Christ because the world needs to know about Jesus. So as ushers come forward right now, they're going to grab their candles. And I want to encourage you to consider this. Have you received Christ? Have you received his light? I pray that this is not just some pyrotechnic exercise in the service. I pray that as you receive this light, that you might have a conversation with God saying, I receive you, Jesus, as the light of my life. And I pray that, Lord, through you, that I will shine bright. If you guys can come over here. And for those of you who know Christ, maybe you've let your light be hidden. Maybe you have been proclaiming lesser truths, false lights, and now it's your opportunity to share about the true light and life of Jesus Christ. The good news of Jesus Christ is that he was meant to be shared every day. Because in the end, this world is dark, and the only thing that will bring light is you, the light of Jesus Christ. So as we close here tonight, we're going to worship together as a church family and sing the song Silent Night. Because it's not a Christmas Eve service unless you sing this song. My prayer as a pastor is that, that we would sing this not just as a melody of our mouths, but I pray that we would make a melody of our heart. And I pray that these words we sing would be true. Amen? Let me pray. Father, we thank you so much for your son, Jesus. Lord, he is the light of the world. We thank you, Lord, that you've given us your spirit to live and dwell in us, God, that we might shine the light of Jesus Christ. Lord, we live in a very dark world, but Lord, we thank you that the light of Christ is greater than anything, Lord, this world might confront us with. So God, I pray that the light would shine brightly in and through this season to bring peace and joy, not just to 
us, but Lord, to the world. In Christ's name, amen. Want to sing together? to stand. Guys, we don't just hold light. We hold it confidently and boldly. We place it in a, in a place of prominence to shine light on the whole house. Guys, God has called you to shine the light of Christ in and through this world. And so tonight as we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, I pray that we would do it confidently and we would be unashamed. Family, we live in a dark world. The world has not understood the light of Jesus Christ, but I am thankful to God that the light of Christ in you is greater than anything in this world. Amen? Amen, guys. You may blow out your candles. Hmm. So we close here today. And I got to make sure you all blow them out, you know, or else we're going to have to have security usher you out of the place. You rebels. We got grace material here. This is perfect. Guys, tonight uh, we are going to conclude and celebrate uh, Jesus as our king. And so I'm so grateful that we do worship and celebrate a king. So as we close here tonight, stand, sing boldly, confidently, because Christ alone is worthy.
Has it not been a very Merry Christmas? We want to thank you so much. If any of you are new and you don't have a church family, we'd love for Grace to be your home. Uh, we're, a, we're a family of imperfect people, so if you got stuff, we do too, but we work it out with the perfect love of Jesus Christ. We got services on Saturday nights at 6 p.m. for families. Uh, then we have services on Sundays at 8 30, I'm sorry, 8 o'clock, 9 30, and 11. This Sunday, we're talking about hindsight is 2020. Kind of catchy, right? We're going to take a year in reflection, and I'm going to share some thoughts on what I had over the last year. But mainly it's this. I pray that we would celebrate the goodness and the glory of, cre uh, of Christ, not just on Christmas, but every day of the year. So on behalf of the staff of Grace Community Church, we want to wish you a very Merry Christmas, guys. God bless you. Have a great day. Amen. <laughs> now that you've done church, go and be the church. Seriously. Love you.